Hi, I'm in the basement. Uh, I thought I would show you a few things and rant about one thing. Uh, this is all the, uh, let's see, this is spaghetti squash that we harvested recently uh, from the garden. Just kind of keeping it cool and dry down here. We have a ton of them. Uh, here's the winter squash. Uh, more of just just a lot. There's a lot of things. Uh, more spaghetti squash guys, and then over here are the onions, um, and then I think in here we've got some potatoes left. Potatoes, potatoes. You get the idea. Uh, more spaghetti squash, but this stupid pump. I replaced this pump. I don't know. It was like three. I don't know. Six months ago, let's say. Uh, I made a video about it. I was pretty hateful having to do it. Pretty much what happened is um, I had a service person come out to service our water softener. He put some water and filters in here and I didn't know about it uh, and they kind of drained down and the water sat in this pump. It corroded it, broke the seals, thing leaked, it didn't, it didn't actually even move. So I had to replace it. Um, it's a several hundred dollar pump and really the overall design of this, whoever built this, I mean look, it's trying to pump water up or over, up, out, and then it has to run all the way over uh, somewhere over here, I don't even know where, but our drain out to the septic field is up here. This is at the, the same height as me. This is six feet up. So somehow, that little pump has to get whatever goes in that drain from that point all the way over here, up, and out there. It doesn't happen. It should never have been built that way, and now all it's doing is failing and failing and failing. So, uh, somebody, obviously, not me, must have put something in here because now it doesn't work and you have to turn it on every time you want to drain the sink there's a pressure switch but the pressure switch isn't activated until you get like an inch of water in there uh, this is called a shellback pump by the way uh, so I don't know what the solution is um, it's currently jammed and now that there's all this water in it it has started leaking a little bit uh, I, I never trusted this when I put it in and obviously it had failed when we, when we moved in. It was not working. Um, and it just takes, we don't even use this thing. It probably gets used once a month and all it takes is one person putting a little bit of water in there for it to just corrode. And even when you do run it, like if I ever put water in there, I run it and let it run for like 30 seconds after I've finished putting water in there just to make sure it gets the rest out. But due to the, the failure of design here, there's no way it's going to fully clear this pipe. There's a check valve up here, which only prevents water from going one way, but you're still left with all of the water that could possibly be in this pipe, and it corrodes, and it breaks things, and, uh, well, here we are again. I have another $225 pump that's cashed, and it's only been six months. So I don't know. I don't even know if I can drain this thing. I put some Drano in it and, uh, and soap and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, so I don't know. This is my failure for today. I, I don't think I'm going to fix it. This is how I'm solving the problem for now uh, with a note. Once I fix this, this will be in the sink telling people not to use this fancy sink that uh, was so beautifully installed here and is completely useless. Okay, enough of a rant. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot of a lot of food down here, so at least that's going okay. Um, I'm gonna head out to the garage and try to start another project. Hopefully I'll have better results than I am having with this. Okay, I'm finally trying to get my composting bins sorted out here. Uh, I'm just going to start with one and live with it for a while, and if I like how it turns out, uh, I will do the same for the other one, or if I discover something that works or something that doesn't work, um, I will modify it for the next one. So, um, I had these hinges from another project. I put a little bend in them so that they would fit around here. I think what I'm going to do is put one here. Um, the latch is probably wherever I end up cutting the hole. It's going to go down there somewhere. 
and then I have this other latch and some bolts. I have to drill out these holes just a little bit because these the bolts don't go right through them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the plan is put them on here. Uh, I'm going to figure out the best place to cut it. I have my shovel here so I make sure it's big enough to at least put a shovel in um, so that I can rotate it and stick a shovel in there and empty it. So uh, I'm going to start drilling some holes and cutting some stiff and we'll see how it goes. Okay, well I did exactly what I didn't want to do. <laughs> I thought I was thought I was going to be clever by not making my final cut here um, because I wanted to leave this in place so that I could make sure my holes line up for this guy and it kind of fell in there and now I have to it's a very very tight gap here so I have to figure out how to get in here to pull this back up so I can drill these holes and make sure it all lines up um, so I was trying to avoid that I, I obviously did not um, so now I gotta figure something out for that well that was actually easier than I thought I got my little saw out here I, hooked a barb on the edge. You can see how, you know, I've only got about a millimeter, sixteenth of an inch there. So I'll uh, kind of leave it like this. It's still a little wide there, but that should be close enough. And then hopefully if this can hold, I can drill the other one over there. Okay, you got that all sorted out. And I'm going to make my final cut down. Yeah. This used to be, at least be peppermint or spearmint or something in there. So although it smells nice, and I did rinse it out once, uh, there's still a bit of a film on the inside. My understanding is that it's non-toxic, <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll find out. kind of see what's going on in there. Um, so I purpose purposefully got longer bolts here because I'm hoping um, as I turn it these will help kind of break things up. Um, I've seen people who put like paddles and stuff in there um, to help keep things turning. I can always add that later. Um, I've also seen people just run a bunch of bolts in like random areas through here. So I might do that as well. Um, you know, if I put wood in there, I'd probably have to put pressure treated and then worry about any chemicals leaching. Although right now, I don't really know how much concerned I am about chemicals, considering there's like a bunch of shiny spearmint in here. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to get this thing buttoned up. I'll tighten everything down, add the latch, and uh, show you how I do in the end. Okay, well, I think I'm uh, good enough for now. I just drilled... Uh, several holes in what I'm calling the bottom. Uh, for the most part, when I, I'll like tumble it and then uh, leave the lid towards the top. So this is the top here. Uh, you'd fill it and then the drainage holes would be on the bottom. Um, based on what I've read, Compost is best made when it's really hot, and uh, by having too many air holes, I would lose heat. And the thing's not like airtight, so there won't be air movement necessarily, but uh, I can always add more holes. I just want to get this thing started. Uh, I'll put a little carabiner in here to keep the critters from getting in there and digging through it. Uh, but I think that's good for now. So, what's next? Uh, Let's see, I've got, I'm going to sand it eventually and then paint it green. Uh, the weather's not great today, so I don't know if I'll do that part of it today, but this is a good start. So I'm glad I've at least done something with this because I've been staring at the stupid thing for 
months now, as anyone who's been following these videos can probably attest to. So, that's that. I'll go get it set up and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, first issue identified. Uh, I guess I should have taken that into account. They're like barely wide enough. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, it still kind of works. I think I can. I could probably take this one off and move it. I could probably move both of them actually out, maybe like a quarter inch, and they should clear. I mean, it. It. It'll turn if I'm careful. <laughs> It's probably fine. But yeah, for the most part, I'm probably going to leave it with this lid part up here. And then you open it and uh, fill it. Fill it from the porch. That was kind of the whole point of putting this thing here with that there, because our kitchen's right through that door. So you can come out here, toss the things in, and. Uh, and you'll have compost. Beautiful, beautiful compost. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I think I'm done with this for now. Um, it's supposed to storm later. So, I'm going to try to mow the lawn before that happens. So wish me luck. Alright, uh, if anything else cool happens today, I'll bring you along. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Later! Hello! I'm going to cut a tree down today. Uh, this little guy here is dead and dying and has vines growing up it and it's competing with this really nice tree here. Um, so I'm going to drop this guy, section it up, and then there's a couple other in there that I might slowly get to, but this is the whole area that I've been working to clear uh, pretty much the whole summer. Um, I'll probably next year be getting a rotary mower, brush mower to keep this maintained. I'm not going to mow it with the mid-mount mower on the Kubota. Um, I keep kind of the outer edge mowed regularly, but I'll probably let this grow up naturally with grasses and whatnot and uh, just keep it maintained probably periodically uh, with a different mower. But somewhere in there there's a pond. I don't know if I'm going to have the ability to get in there. It's really overgrown. Uh, it'd be nice, uh, I don't know, maybe in a year or two to save some money to have a guy come out with a backhoe and restore it and just dig it all out, make it into something nice. But in the meantime, I still need to drop a couple trees that are dead, dying, and just no good. I might be able to, I want to section that thing up too. It's a massive log. Uh, I don't know if my little 14-inch bar can handle it, but we'll see. Um, so once I drop it all, I'll probably fire up the Kubota and uh, get the pallet forks on and make a pile for a fire. So, uh, I'll get this all set up and we'll take some trees down today. Yeah.
saw got a little stuck there at the end. <laughs> but uh, the entire middle of this thing, let me get my tripod out of the way. Man, this thing was rotted off. Look at all these ants. This thing was rotten to the core. Wow, I saw the queen. I kind of freaked out when I was like, oh, actually, is that it right there? I, I, it was a massive ant, and for a second I thought it was a wasp. It was so big, uh, so I was about to make a run for it, thinking I'd hit a wasp nest. Because I've been there and done that. Look at that. But uh, no, just a bunch of ants. Uh, they're probably going to start crawling up me. Alright, well, you know, not, not the prettiest cut, but uh, went where I wanted it to, so now I'm just going to limb it up and uh, get it cleaned up to see how far it went. Got it right out into the driveway there. Alright, a bit of clean up to do. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Okay, well, I've sectioned it up a bit. Uh, now is probably a good time to get the tractor, though. Okay, now I'm just going to stack stuff on the pallet forks and uh, take it over to where I previously burned stuff because uh, that's like super dead with as hot as that was and for the fact that it burned for a week, um, yeah, it's, it's never going to grow anything there for the next few years. So I'm taking it over there and I'll show you how I do. I lifted up the main log here and set it on another smaller log so I can continue to section it. Uh, I don't know if I said I used the tractor to do that. I didn't lift that thing. That thing's a thousand pounds. Okay, uh, get some get some chainsaw going. Yeah.
that's it for me tonight. But I think we should just take a moment to appreciate how orange everything is. I have a pretty sweet orange sunset going on. Got my orange saw, got my orange pants, my orange hat, my orange tractor. I don't know. Sometimes there's forces at play that are bigger than you and me. Alright, thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.